Hey girls, I know that I said I wouldn't update or do this video um, until I had some time, but Dave and I were talking last night and he kind of made a good point. He said that it might be good for me to kind of release these feelings and um, I can choose to post the video or not. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, this subject is very emotional. We're currently going through this. Obviously it's not a happy time and this video is probably going to be very emotional and if that's something that makes you uncomfortable then this video might not be something that you want to watch. If I do post this video it's because this is a part of our journey and as sad as it might be I hope that in some way this video can help another uh, couple that's going through this or maybe it might give someone answers to questions. My husband and I, like I said, have been trying since 2013, November 2013, uh, preparing to try and we didn't start actively trying until the fall of 2014. Since the beginning of our TTC journey, I was taking fertility treatments. Um, I was taking Clomid as well as metformin to help me ovulate. In January, Dave and I decided that we would stop Clomid um, and try naturally because um, Clomid really wasn't getting us anywhere. I was responding to it, but I wasn't responding to it as well. I also had a lot of side effects that I was not happy with, and I just felt that Clomid was setting us back. That's, that's not the case for everybody. Um, again, Clomid affects everyone different. Um, for me, it wasn't um, very nice, and so we took a break, and to our surprise, we were able to conceive um, in January. This is going to be part two of the update. I tried to film this video on Friday, but um, I couldn't hold it together long enough to kind of make it through that video. I was just so emotional that I just couldn't finish it, and um, so that is why I'm making a part two. And I'm also making a part two because a lot of things have happened since I've made that update. On Monday morning, um, I had been waiting for my last HCG blood draw. Um, I had been waiting for those results since the Friday before that. And I had been waiting. Um, finally, I decided to call my doctor's office. And I pretty much had to beg them to give me the um, level, the quant level. And um, the nurse said that my levels did drop down into the 100s and that was a pretty significant drop and she had asked if I was bleeding. I said no. She told me to stop the progesterone and come in to get a rogue gamma shot because I do have a negative blood, blood type. I did that. I was still feeling optimistic um, because I hadn't had any cramping or bleeding um, at all. Tuesday night I started to feel a little bit of cramping. Um, I was talking to Dave and my mom and they just said, you know, don't give up complete hope yet if you're not in too much pain and you're not bleeding, maybe everything's okay. Wednesday morning, about 2 or 3 in the morning, um, I started cramping again. Um, my mom was bringing over a nebulizer for me because I do have um, asthma and I was fighting a cold at the same time and I didn't want to go into the hospital and, you know, risk having to spend you know, six, seven hundred dollars for a visit. I went to the restroom and I had begun spotting. I sat down on the bed and I told Dave that it was happening and I just broke down um, because at that point I had held on to that hope and I just kept thinking, you know, maybe our little peanut's okay. And um, when I saw the spotting, I knew I knew what was happening. And the spotting continued until Thursday, and by Thursday night it had started to pick up a little bit more to a heavier flow. And then Friday morning um, I had to start wearing a thicker pad instead of um, thin pads or panty liners. Um, Dave went to work around 1 
Right after he left, um, I put Dallas down for a nap, and then I laid on the couch for a little bit because I could feel some um, cramping, and it, it was starting to get pretty intense. I was laying there on the on the couch for probably maybe an hour, um, and the pain really started to get worse. It started to get really intense. So I sat in the bathtub for a while. Um, I sat in the bathtub for maybe like a half hour, an hour and I could still feel the pain. It was kind of, it was in my back um, mostly, but I could feel it um, from my belly button down. Um, and I'm, and by then I knew it was contractions. And if you haven't had a miscarriage before, or you don't know, um, essentially a miscarriage is labor. Um, you still have labor pains, which are contractions. Um, I had a lot of cervix pain as well. My cervix felt really, um, I guess, really sore and swollen and sensitive. They weren't too far apart. It, I was just kind of in constant pain. Um, I got out of the bathtub, got Dallas up from his nap, and I tried to make dinner for him. By the time I finished dinner, the pain was getting more intense. Um, it was making me really nauseous to the point that I was throwing up. Um, Dave came home and I was just in agony. I was just laying on our bed curled up in a ball and I was just bawling my eyes out because the pain was so bad. Um, my doctor's office never told me what to expect with this. Um, they didn't even advise me to save whatever I would pass as far as clots or tissue to have genetic testing done, which I wanted to have done. Um, but I didn't know that you could do that without a DNC, which is what I had in my first pregnancy. I don't know if my doctor's office just assumed because I've, I had a miscarriage before that I would know what to expect, but um, I had to ask questions and I wasn't really given a clear answer. Um, I asked to speak to my doctor and they said that he doesn't speak to patients over the phone, which made me really upset because I couldn't get in to see him. The time that I was able to even get in there was to have a Rogam shot. With my first pregnancy, um, I had to have a DNC done. I miscarried at 14 weeks and I had to have a DNC done. I was advised then that I could take um, a pill to help start things going then and I could have something to help dilate my cervix, but they said that I would most likely have to do that in the hospital because it would be very painful and there were other side effects. And then I was just so emotionally distraught that I just wanted to get everything over with, so that is why I had the DNC done. And I honestly wish I had that option this time around because not only was the physical pain bad, it's my how I was feeling emotionally, I think it made it a lot worse because I was tensing up and um, not really allowing my body to go through this. When Dave got home, I told him, I said, I think I need to go to the, the emergency room. I'm just not feeling very well. Um, I was throwing up. I was um, having chills. I was just in complete agony. Like, that's the only way I could explain it. Steve called my mother-in-law, and he, uh, my mother-in-law was actually going to come to our house to watch Dallas, but I told Dave, I said, I don't think I can wait. So we just got in the car really quick, and she met us at the hospital, and she sat with Dallas while um, Dave and I were brought back into a triage room. Um, once I got there, they um, asked me questions. They put me on the heart monitor, I guess, because my heart rate and my BP was really high, and um, that was mostly due to the amount of pain I was in. Um, they also had trouble finding a vein, so they had to have another nurse come in with an ultra ultrasound machine to find where the veins are in my arm, and finally they were able to get an IV in. They took um, blood samples for to check for um, infection and my quant levels and uh, other things, I guess. Um, they did that, and then they were finally able to give me some fluids to help with my dizziness because at that point I was really dizzy and I just didn't feel that feel very good. They also gave me Zofran for the nausea and they gave me and they gave me Dilatin for pain. And the nurse did warn me that 
once they would put the Dilaudid in my IV, it would kind of give me a head rush and kind of make me feel um, like really, I guess really tight in my head and neck, but that didn't happen. It was all over my body and it hurt so bad. And even though it was only for a couple, a couple of seconds, um, accompanied with the pain that I was already in, a sudden rush of the um, pain medication, it was just really, really, really painful. After having the Dilaudid, um, I had to use the bathroom. And by then I was already soaking through my pants, my underwear, a pad, and the little um, like pad thing that you, they place underneath you. I told the doctor that so they were worried about hemorrhage so that so he did say that he would be doing an, um, a pelvic exam. And when I got up to use the bathroom I was really dizzy from the Dilaudid so the nurse put me in a wheelchair and I was wheeled to the bathroom. And while I was in the bathroom I did pass the baby. I let um, the nurse know and I went back into the room and I told the doctor and I told him I explained you know the size of the gestational sac and I asked him I said it was pretty big I think I might have been further along than what they thought and he said um, that was very likely and um, he then gave me the pelvic exam and told me that it was probably most likely the end of the miscarriage. I did pass the, the entire placenta with the baby and um, when he did check me I was still bleeding but it wasn't as bad as it was previously. So after the um, pelvic exam um, we waited for discharge instructions and um, the doctor was really sweet. He said that um, him and his wife had experienced a loss and they were able to get pregnant two, uh, two more times after that. And he said, I can't even imagine what it would feel like to go through that again. And he was just so nice to Dave and I and he was very caring and compassionate and as well as all the nurses there too. I definitely um, want to send them like a thank you card or even, you know, write to their um, HR department to give them, you know, praise because they were really, really compassionate and really helpful to Dave. And I'm no longer in severe pain. I'm not having um, those contractions anymore. Um, now I'm just having, I guess, um, mild cramping. Um, sometimes it gets bad if I, if I do too much, like if I lift Dallas or if I'm um, moving around too much then I usually have to take some kind of, uh, usually then I have to take Motrin, but for the most part it hasn't been um, as bad as it was. So that kind of brings you guys up to date on what happened. Emotionally, Dave and I are grieving. Um, I know that we weren't as far as long in this pregnancy, but this baby was so wanted and so loved and I don't think either of us ever imagined that this would happen and I think the hardest part is not having answers as to why this happened. I just feel so empty and just heartbroken. We are just squeezing Dallas extra tight and we're giving him lots of cuddles and he's definitely been such a trooper through this entire thing. Um, I was really, really scared that he saw me in that amount of pain. I definitely didn't want him to see me like that. Um, so I'm really thankful that my mother-in-law was able to kind of, uh, I was really thankful that my mother-in-law took Dallas and watched him while we were in the hospital. Um, but he was such a sweetheart. He just kept giving me kisses and telling me not to cry. And he was definitely my little, my little miracle. <laughs> so, and I know is bad. I know that even though this is so painful and we're grieving, I know that we have to thank God for 
answering our prayers even though it didn't the outcome wasn't what we wanted. He gave us something beautiful even though it was for just a few few weeks. This little baby is up in heaven watching over us. I just think right now we need just time to kind of process this and to grieve and just be together. Um, I do see my doctor on Friday. Um, I'm not sure what he's going to do. If it, I'm going to have an ultrasound to make sure that I passed everything. I'm not sure when I'll update again. Um, I will try after my appointment just to kind of let you guys know what's going on. I do have a couple videos of Dallas as well that I'll be putting up. I just, I just want to say thank you to everybody. And thank you for the prayers and the support. Um, you guys are really helping us through this. And just to know that everybody's there, it just feels like we have like this huge community around us just giving us, you know, hugs and prayers and... I can't express how thankful I am to all of you and to everybody that's, you know, wrote to us or everybody that's, you know, commented or sent us an email. Um, your support really does mean a lot to us and I just, I, I hope God blesses you all for your kindness. But I will try to update you guys on Friday.